If we've got a sick animal, the first thing we want to do is ask a series of questions to the keepers, and these questions are called taking a history. And the idea of them is to give you an idea of what the animal is, how old it is, what sex it is, how it's kept, what it's been fed, um, whether it lives with other animals or by itself, uh, and whether new animals have been intro introduced to the group, whether this is a new animal that's only been here for a short while or not, and then to move on to what problem the keepers have noticed and whether that's getting better or worse or staying much the same. Um, and they, the questions are designed to rule out certain problems. So for instance, if you ask whether the animal's male or female and they tell you it's female, you know that some of the problems it might have are related to its reproductive tract. And if it's a tortoise, maybe it's got a problem with egg laying. But if it's a male tortoise, obviously that's not going to be an issue. We need to know these things so that we can build up a picture of what the common problems might be and we can start to make ourselves a list of things that are likely to happen. So with zoo animals, after we've got the history and we found out a bit about the animal, ideally we want to look at it in its own environment where it feels relaxed. And this is quite useful because in domestic animals, normally you see an animal when it's brought to the vet. And at that point, it's possibly a bit nervous um, and it's trying to hide any symptoms of being sick. So when you look at an animal in its own environment, you're looking for things like, uh, how is that animal standing? Is it looking relaxed and comfortable? Or if it's got stomachache or a backache, it might sort of be hunched up. Uh, you look at how it walks and whether it's walking with a limp uh, or holding a leg completely off the ground, or whether it's walking with nice even stride lengths uh, and no sort of lameness at all. You can look at its face for any signs of discharges from eyes or nose or mouth. You can look around its tail and see if there's any signs of diarrhoea on the tail or down the back of the legs. And the keepers know the animals really well, so you need to rely on them a lot because they'll tell you what the animal's normal behaviour is. And if it's a really outgoing animal that's normally first down for food in the morning, but today it's right at the back of the group and it's not coming down until the others have eaten most of the food, the keepers will know that's abnormal. Whereas you, as a vet, might not realise that. Um, you might just think it's one of the quieter animals in the group. We put that information together with the history that we've got and then we can narrow down our list of problems that might be affecting that animal so that we can move on to the next stage of diagnosis. Uh, once we've taken the history and we've looked at the animal, uh, we then have to make the difficult decision of whether we can find something to treat it um, for the next few days and see how it goes or whether we really need to get some information quickly from it to be able to diagnose the problem and give it the best possible treatment. So when we got our hands on the animal there are several things we can do. The first one is doing a clinical examination. So that's where we get our stethoscope out and we listen to the heart and we listen to the lungs and we have a feel of the abdomen and we get the legs and we flex the joints and we extend the joints and see whether they have a full range of movement. We'll have a look in the mouth and look at the teeth, we'll have a look at eyes uh, and in the ears and then we'll feel things called lymph nodes which tend to swell up when they have infections. Once we've done that clinical examination we can decide whether we need to take some diagnostic samples. So those might be blood samples um, to look at red and white blood cells and to look at enzymes that are produced by damaged tissues and we might want to take some x-rays so that we can look at joints more closely or size of heart or size of our liver. We might get our ultrasound out and also look at some of the soft tissue organs like the liver and the heart with those. Um, and we could go on and do more advanced tests like biopsies for instance um, or skin scrapes or uh, getting our endoscope out and putting it inside the animal and taking biopsies from internal organs. And once we've got all that information together, it will help us form a picture of what's going on with that animal and enable us to give it the best possible treatment.